The only location that has not had an issue with flow rates or clotting has been the jugular vein. I have replaced several femoral Shiley catheters and all of our nephrologists are requesting jugular placement. And this is where assessment comes full circle. From the initial patient encounter, the severity of the disease should be assessed as the decision for central venous access is made, keeping in mind that you may want to preserve the jugular route for a dialysis catheter. Of course, a simple answer is that you can use the right jugular for Shiley placement and the left for CVC placement. But then the question comes about kissing catheters. Now, I don't believe this is a real term, but if you examine the radiograph in this picture, you can see the catheters both enter the SVC and in this hypercoagulable state, it is hyperbolized that this would have a higher rate for venous thrombosis and or catheter failure. Temporary dialysis catheters can range from an 11 to a 14 French. This is a large catheter to place on a very frail patient population. One key tip for safe large bore catheter placement is dilating up. This includes a 21 gauge 7 centimeter needle and a 0.018 inch guide wire, allowing the initial puncture to be confirmed with a small bore needle should any difficulties arise with vessel entry. It is important to be aware that the needles that accompany the TLC and dialysis catheter kits are coring needles, meaning it cuts on both sides rather than the simple beveled 21 gauge needle. Once the 0.018 wire is confirmed with ultrasonic visualization, the dilator and sheath can be placed over the wire to the vessel. The dilator can then be removed and the 0.035 inch J wire passed through the sheath. The sheath is then removed a 7 French dilator is then thread over the wire to dilate vessel entry. And finally, the Shiley catheter can be placed over the wire to its intended location. It is important to note that one length catheter does not fit all access sites. The 15 centimeter catheter should be reserved for the right jugular vein as it will be too short on the left. But personal experience is to use a 20 centimeter catheter bilaterally as it provides enough catheter to comfortably provide a smooth angle to dress the catheter. On the patient in the second picture, she was only able to lie in a ball on her right side. This access approach was very complicated, but made safe through the use of a micropuncture technique. One key component to dialysis catheter insertion is how it is dressed. As you can see, a low jugular puncture allows the catheter to be dressed down to the chest or lateral or to the back as you see in the second photo. What should be avoided is dressing these catheters up the neck as the dressing cannot be maintained. There are so many factors that influence the choice of insertion site. With the majority of the COVID population in our hospital being morbidly obese, the depth of the insertion can be the greatest challenge. The patient to the upper left was 500 pounds. The physicians had attempted the jugular veins bilaterally, but were unable to pass the catheter to the SVC. It would malposition to the ipsilateral subclavian vein. After my physical examination, I noticed that the patient had a history of right portacath insertion, which could have provided some type of compromise to the internal jugular vein. The femoral vein was far beyond the depth of the ultrasound at six centimeters. The axillary vein was then examined and able to be visualized at six centimeters deep. This could make for a complicated over the wire insertion because of the depth. The patient was hypotensive. So to safely access this site, I decided to access with a five French modified Seldinger technique, which involves a seven centimeter needle to the vessel and then a 0.018 guide wire to be placed into the vein. But I knew that the six centimeter introducer would not be long enough to enter the vein and would pop out after wire removal. So I planned on dropping a six French 10 centimeter introducer, which would provide safe purchase into the vein. At this point, the dilator would be removed and a 0.035 inch wire thread and sheath removed. The dilator was then placed over the wire to the vein and removed and the catheter thread to 20 centimeters. <clears throat> The case on the bottom was a COVID positive patient requiring dialysis access for acute renal failure. Our Shiley kits are interventional style, meaning they do not come with max barrier draping. So I use a pick kit as draping and dispose of the pick line. In this scenario, the patient had poor peripheral access as well as requiring the dialysis catheter. So the decision was made to drape for a jugular Shiley catheter and then drape the mid thigh region for a femorally inserted central catheter. This not only conserved on resources, but accomplished the task of providing venous and dialysis access. 
Another option would be to simply place a trialysis catheter, but in the hypercoagulable patient, this type of catheter can clot more easily than a dual lumen catheter. Finally, the prone patient requiring central vascular access. The majority of our patient population requiring prone position is morbidly obese. As you can see in the first photo, there is no neck, meaning impossible to view the jugular vein for catheter placement. The massive chest lies heavy on the mattress, and even when abducting the arm, the axillary vein is too deep to access, not to mention it would be a virtually impossible task to perform in a sterile fashion. The upper extremities are often swollen, preventing the location of veins to place a pick line catheter in. We have even scanned directly into the axillary region in the armpit location and were unable to visualize the vessel there. The popliteal was the next choice since accessing the femoral vein was obviously impossible when prone, but this vessel was too deep and much too small a caliber for a TLC insertion. Finally, I examined the medial aspect of the inner thigh and located the femoral vein and artery. It was six centimeters deep. Using a seven centimeter access needle, a 0.018 hydrophilic 80 centimeter guide wire, and a six French 10 centimeter dilator and sheath, I was able to safely provide access to this location with a 55 centimeter triple lumen central venous catheter and thread it to the location of the inferior vena cava. In the prone, morbidly obese patient, a mid-thigh femoral central venous catheter is a safe and viable solution for central access. Vascular access challenges at the bedside in the past pale in comparison to this new healthcare environment. We are now trying to distance and isolate ourselves from the patient while still titrating and administering medications from outside of the room. This requires incredibly long tubing, and with that, there's a finite amount of that tubing. So when a new catheter is placed, you cannot get new IV tubing as we once would for new lines. The long tubing is often getting tripped on over in rooms, which in turn pulls on the catheter insertion sites. There is no question that out of the available securement devices, that a subdermal securement device is the device of choice for catheter securement. Losing access in these critical patients is unacceptable. Any patient that has this type of treatment from outside of the room with extension tubing should only be running through a central venous catheter to prevent infiltration and extravasation of a peripheral that you cannot monitor. But should you be treating a stable patient through a peripheral IV, Securement can be achieved with skin glue and a reliable dressing. In the first patient, a right jugular TLC and right jugular Shiley catheter were placed in what we call a tandem style. This approach is often used in the operating room. Due to the patient's hypercoagulable state, the catheter stopped functioning and I was called in to replace these on another obese male. Careful assessment with ultrasound revealed a patent left axillary vein. The decision then was made to place a new triple lumen in the left axillary vein, transfer the drips from the right triple lumen catheter to the left, and then remove the right triple lumen and right Shiley catheter. From experience, our hospital has had poor outcomes with femorally placed dialysis catheters. So the solution was to assess the right jugular for a new Shiley catheter placement. A location low on the neck at the base of the clavicular head was easily accessible with ultrasound. But in order to use this location, I could not have a dressing over the old exit site location. So I chose to place a layer of skin glue over both puncture sites and then prep the dialysis catheter for insertion. In our second picture, a pediatric patient with COVID was crashing during an intubation.